Well, hello and welcome back to Lap of the World. I'm Richard. I missed you guys. <laughs> it has been a long off season for one reason or another, but we're back. Uh, and I'm looking forward to 2020. It looks like it's probably going to be a pretty good year. Um, if you're not already subscribed with a bell clicked on, this would be probably a good time to do that because we are starting hot. Uh, I have already called an end to my own off season and signed up for an event uh, for some fun, hopefully in the sun, at the Florida International Rally and Motorsports Park down in uh, northern Florida, uh, otherwise known as The Firm. Uh, I'll, I'll link to them below. They've got pretty active social media, so go check them out and, uh, and follow them where applicable. But uh, before we get to that, of course, we have to get the car ready, which is why it's, uh, it's up in the air right now. And that kind of brings us on to our topic today. As I was going through the tech inspection here, um, I decided I would play around. Uh, my friend TJ and I, who you've met on the channel before, we do kind of a, an oddball tool exchange every Christmas. Uh, and this year, I got a, uh, a brake fluid tester in my stocking. Uh, now, this is a neat little device here. I'll, I'll kind of explain how it works once we get into things. But... I figure we would uh, we would have some fun while I'm doing the tech inspection on the MSX, in which, you know, of course, it's everything is checking out uh, pretty well so far. So it looks like I'm uh, I'm good to go, and uh, with a whatever we out of you know couple of weeks out at this point. Right. So we've talked about brake fluid on the channel probably a couple of times. Uh, it'll probably continue to be a topic as well because it's kind of important. Uh, it is the only connection you have between your right foot or left foot, depending on what car you're driving, and stopping your vehicle. Uh, in most cars, that is a direct hydraulic connection. Some newer cars have brake by wire, but uh, they still use a hydraulic system in the end. So it's pretty much universally applicable. Now, the way brake fluid fails, uh, I guess we should rewind a little bit and say that in my experience, the most common brake failure that you'll see on the track is brake fluid failure. Now, barring a leak of some kind, the most common way that brake fluid fails is by boiling. So you've, you know, you've gotten it too hot and it's boiled and that creates air pockets. And whereas hydraulic fluid, your know, brake fluid, is not compressible in its natural state, once you introduce air bubbles, those are compressible and that means you're getting, you know, it's putting a sponge in the system basically so that the force you're applying to the pedal or via the brake booster or whatever other electronic control mechanism, uh, the force that's getting applied there isn't all making it uh, down to the calipers and rotors and thusly isn't stopping the car as efficiently, meaning that if you're already on the limit of your braking zone, if you've gone as deep as you can and all of a sudden the, uh, you know, the, the clamps aren't clamping as tight, uh, then you're going off the end more than likely. So, the measure of I guess, how good a brake fluid is, is uh, its boiling points. Uh, or are its boiling points. Brake fluid, as I've discussed before, has two primary measures. There's a dry boiling point and a wet boiling point. Uh, now, why two different boiling points? Well, the dry boiling point is applicable when the brake fluid is new. Now, brake fluid by its nature is hydrophilic, meaning it attracts water and will absorb it. Uh, so over time, it will get saturated. And now water doesn't have as high a boiling point as pure brake fluid, so the kind of mixture thereof ends up with a lower boiling point. So a brake fluid that has absorbed as much water as it can will have a lower boiling point, and that is the quoted wet boiling point that you'll see on most uh, high performance brake fluids. Uh, and that's important if you're a type of person who leaves brake fluid in their car for a long period of time uh, or does more than one event is you could potentially hit that wet boiling point. But what I've never, I guess I've never read or noted or seen anyone test how long it takes for that actually to happen. You know, how long does it take brake fluid if just sort of uh, you know, if you leave it on the shelf, how long does it take to get from new dry boiling point, you know, maximum efficiency to completely um, saturated and depleted efficiency? 
Well, the goal today is to start to put a dent in that, uh, in that knowledge gap of my own. Uh, and somebody may link me to immediately some sort of, uh, uh, you know, peer-reviewed journal article about the, uh, uh, the degradation of brake fluid or something like that in the comments, and I completely welcome that. But uh, we're going to try a little practical experiment today, so let's jump over to the workbench and we'll get started. All right, so before we get to the test at hand, let's first talk about our testing equipment. So this brake fluid tester, how does it actually work? Well, in literal terms, you push the button on top, you dunk the little metal probes into the brake fluid, and it will light up and give you a reading. Now, it does this by measuring the resistance of the fluid that you dip the little probes in. Those are two electrodes, and they are going to measure the, uh, or I guess they're right, the electrical resistance of the fluid will depend on how much water it has absorbed. As it gets more saturated, it's more conductive, and therefore it tells this thing that it has more fluid, more uh, water in it. And it will give you a percentage reading. So it measures up to more than 4% of water, and that is pretty much considered fully saturated at that point. Now, on to what we're actually testing today. So what you have in front of you now are four samples of the same brake fluid, but in different uh, states of existence, I guess. <laughs> uh, on the far right, you have old brake fluid. Uh, this is actually brake fluid that I bled out of the NSX before NS Expo 2019. And it has just been sitting out, uh, exposed with the, in a you know, plastic water bottle because I haven't bothered to go and recycle it yet. And uh, with the lid off, out of my workbench in the garage. Uh, so it's been, you know, just sitting open. Uh, second from the right, this is a sample of brake fluid that was stored. So that was from an open bottle. Is the bottle that I opened, again, uh, before NS Expo 2019. The far right was bled out in September 2019. And the bottle uh, second from the right was opened in September 2019. It is now February 2020. That bottle was stored with the cap on, so the foil is broken, has been broken since September 2019. The, it's been stored with the cap on and also bagged in uh, basically a Ziploc bag. Um, I also tested off camera the fluid in the master cylinder, which again was the brake fluid that I bled in out of, out of this container. This is the, it was the fluid that I bled into the car in the master cylinder. I tested off camera just for, to get a reading. Then moving on to the third from the right, here, this is a brand new unopened bottle of Motul RBF 600, which is the fluid I use because it's Above average performance has a fairly high wet boiling point in case it does get degraded while it's in the car uh, and is uh, easily obtainable. <laughs> uh, that's kind of come into acute focus recently with the worldwide lack of Castrol SRF. Um, whereas I can go down to like the motorcycle shop down the street and pick up a bottle of this if I need to. And then uh, finally, the uh, little bleeder jug over here on the far left is what I have just minutes ago bled out of the calipers of the NSX. Now I have multiple questions here which will hopefully answer some of them. Uh, as I mentioned before one of the questions is how long does brake fluid keep? Uh, just you know left sort of not being abused so much, but not necessarily being brand new. Like how long will it just sit? One of the other questions I had stems from actually running with a, an organization that tests brake fluid as part of their tech requirements. Now, I'd never heard of or run with an organization that actually asked you to bleed any fluid out of a caliper to test. They just dip a tester similar to the one I have now into the master cylinder and base their tech pass or fail on that reading. My question is, is the fluid that's in the master cylinder an actual representation or an accurate representation of the condition of the fluid that could be in the calipers? So with that said, let's actually test some fluid here. We'll start with the uh, 
the really old and uh, left to left the elements break fluid from September 2019. And we are getting, you can see that's all the way up the scale. That is full red. This is junk. So I'm going to go ahead and dry my uh, sensor probes off before I test anything else. And I'll do that between each one in case I cut the video and you don't hear me doing it. So next we have brake fluid that was just stored in a bag on a shelf, unopened. We've got like one and maybe one and a half lights. Ah, uh, yeah, give or take. And for the record, that was essentially the same measurement that I got when I dipped the uh, sensor in the, in the master cylinder of the car before I bled it this time. So that's what that looks like. So then, for comparison then, let me, uh, I'm going to go open this real quick. Which I feel better about opening this just for this test. Now that I can see that the stuff that I've had stored uh, you know, in its original container and also in a bag for four months, it, it, it tests essentially new. So <laughs> I'm not just burning 20 bucks here. Okay, so new out of the box or out of the bottle brake fluid. I don't see much difference between that and the stuff that I had stored, sealed and stored, really. That's pretty much maybe one or, you know, one, one and a half. Uh, okay, so that's an interesting data point. I'm going to take the cap off of the, uh, the bleeder bottle here. And we'll see what we get out of this. Now I'm I'm really I'm horribly curious. This is why I put a drip pan down. All right, so this is stuff that I just bled out of, bled out of the calipers of the car. All right, so that is fully submerged and it is still showing just the bottom green light. Uh, so I guess that makes me feel pretty good about uh, continuing to use this stuff. Again, I'm not in any way sponsored here. This is just what I had on hand because it's what I've been using for uh, years at this point and has not, uh, it hasn't treated me wrong. <laughs> but uh, this is kind of where the interesting stuff will start. So effectively right now, we do know that eventually, because we got a reading on this uh, old brake fluid that's just been left out to the elements, uh, we, you know, we did get a fail on that one. So eventually it does go bad. And then the question is, how long does it take to do that? Obviously, if it's, you know, if it's in a, an appropriately sealed bottle, even if the foil isn't intact, it's going to be basically new still or, you know, perfectly usable uh, even after several months on the shelf. Similarly, the uh, new stuff out of the bottle, uh, you know, freshly opened bottle uh, performed as expected. And then I guess reassuringly, the old stuff that I bled out of the NSX uh, that's been in the car for, uh, you know, again, four months and underwent uh, two track days at Summit Point, Maine, uh, that actually passed with flying colors still. So, you know, am I going to change my habits of sort of lightly bleeding the system before each event? No, not so much. Uh, am I going to go, you know, potentially longer than I usually do before a complete flush, I don't know. Uh, we'll find out because what I'm gonna do now is I will now leave this guy, this sample here that I've pulled out of a fresh bottle. Uh, I'm just gonna leave it on the back of my workbench, uncovered, and I'm gonna test it periodically. Uh, and I will report back at which point it actually uh, reads something other than uh, brand new uh, with the brake fluid tester. And I'll kind of keep a log of that, and there will be some future video where I'll be able to actually say, okay, well, yeah, if you leave your, uh, you know, RBF 600 bottle open on your workbench in a humid environment in the southeast United States, 
uh, this is how long it will be good before it actually starts to uh, really absorb water and uh, degrade. I interrupt myself to bring you some instant gratification. You'll recall a moment ago I said, in some future video I'll have an update about the brake fluid that I was leaving out. Well, never mind that. Here is a reading taken just about 48 hours after I recorded the original video. And here is another reading taken after just about 72 hours. What this tells me is it's of vital importance to properly store brake fluid, and more so to make sure that your master cylinder actually seals appropriately, as brake fluid left open to the air, even in a climate-controlled garage, will effectively spoil inside of a week. A quick follow-up as well to the question about if tech inspectors taking a reading from the master cylinder could be representative of the fluid in the calipers and the rest of the system. I think we have to call our current findings inconclusive and say for now that it is probably a good measure and that it will definitely weed out cars that may have totally spent fluid in the entire system and therefore pose a potential hazard. So, <laughs> that's our fun experiment for the day and interesting data points there. Your mileage may vary and please consult a professional when it comes to uh, brake fluid changing frequency and things like that because... Uh, uh, you know, I obviously have some experience there, but I am quote unquote, not an expert or professional. <laughs> All right, well that wraps up my attempts at uh, shade tree science for this week. Uh, thanks to TJ for the uh, new toy to play with and thanks to the rest of you for watching. I hope you found it uh, entertaining if not informative. If you did, don't forget to click subscribe down below. Uh, I'm Richard, this is Laugh of the World and I will see all of you in the next video if not at the firm on February 21st or 22nd, if you want to go sign up for the event, I might see you there. Bye.